Welcome to our channel, and today we are going to help you understand the Paper P Plus Extended Textual Conditioning in Text-to-Image Generation. The current paper introduces a more sophisticated approach to text-to-image generation and editing by establishing an Extended Textual Conditioning ETC space, referred to as P plus dollars, which grants more nuanced control over the image synthesis process. It achieves this through multiple textual conditions corresponding to different layers of a denoising unit within a diffusion model, as opposed to the previous methods, which primarily focused on single layer text conditioning or editing based on pivotal inversion or text only controls. Compared to the earlier approaches, the new framework allows for a more disentangled representation and precise control, as it enables images to be inverted into the P plus DAW space using layer-specific tokens, which the authors term Extended Textual Inversion, XTI. This inversion is more expressive, achieves a higher precision, and converges faster compared to the original textual inversion, TI technique, while also avoiding trade-offs between image reconstruction quality and editability. Unique to this paper is the demonstration of object style mixing, a capability not previously achievable with the existing text to image models. The extensive experiments conducted by the authors underline the improved performance and potential of this new method for personalizing text to image models tailored to the user's needs. Overall, this paper builds upon and significantly extends past methods by offering a richer and more flexible inversion space that allows for enhanced image generation, personalization, and editing capabilities without compromising on the fidelity or adaptability of the generated images. The paper by Andre Voinov et al. introduces an extended textual conditioning P space for text-to-image generation models. This P-plus space provides the ability to specify multiple textual prompts at different layers of a denoising unit within a diffusion model, offering more control and better disentanglement over the image synthesis process. Traditional models use a single text embedding, P-space, injected into all layers, which the authors juxtapose with their extended approach of injecting different embeddings, P-plus space, into corresponding layers. The authors also present extended textual inversion, XTI, an approach that enables images to be inverted into P plus space and represented by tokens at various layers, leading to more expressive, precise, and faster converging results compared to the original textual inversion TI space. XTI allows for high quality reconstruction without sacrificing image editability and produces more consistent inversions. The paper provides an analysis and extensive experiments to understand the properties of P plus space demonstrating its effectiveness for personalizing text-to-image models. P plus space also enables new results in object style mixing, which were previously not achievable. An example shown is the mixing of shape and style from two separate XTIs, allowing the creation of images that combine the shape of one object with the style and appearance of another. The research signifies progress in neural generative models for image synthesis enhancing the capabilities for creative and design purposes. The text discusses the introduction of an extended textual inversion, XTI, for improving the personalization of text-to-image models. It builds on the idea of textual inversion, TI, which involves representing specific concepts using a dedicated token learned from a few input images. This token can then be used to create diverse images related to the concept when included in text prompts. XTI enhances this process by inverting input images into a set of token embeddings for each layer, referred to as inversion into P+. This method is not only quicker, but also provides more expressive and accurate results than the traditional TI, without sacrificing the ability to edit the generated images. The authors leveraged the properties of P+, to achieve state-of-the-art results in object appearance mixing by utilizing the inherent shape style disentanglement of the model's layers. The paper compares P plus to StyleGAN's W plus extended latent space, noting that P plus remains editable, similar to the standard text conditioning space P, while addressing the issue of W plus's reduced editability when extended. Additionally, the authors acknowledge the role of different layers in generative models, which corresponds to different levels of abstraction that benefit from varied textual descriptions. Furthermore, there is a discussion of advancements in text-to-image models, particularly noting the use of diffusion models for text-driven image editing tasks. 
The text lists various techniques and models that have improved single image editing and text-driven editing capabilities, although acknowledging that they often require extensive computational resources. Finally, the text touches upon the challenges and current methods of personalizing text-to-image models, which require complex inversion processes for synthesizing rare or specific concepts not well represented in the training data. A project page is mentioned at https prompt plusgithubio and additional related works are described relating to text-driven editing, personalization, and editing within generative models. Please note, the translation isn't a perfect one-to-one -one and may not retain all the nuances of the original text. The text discusses a study of how different cross-attention layers in a denoising unit, part of a text-to-image diffusion model, process text prompts differently according to their spatial resolution. The study found that the fine outer layers of the UNet are more influential in determining color, while the coarse inner layers are more significant in deciding content, such as shape or object type. The study highlighted a trade-off between learning tokens that accurately capture concepts and avoiding overfitting. Overfitness can limit a model's ability to generalize or create novel variations of a concept. The researcher's method, unlike traditional inversion, TI, does not require fine-tuning nor modification of the model's weights, reducing the risk of overfitting and preserving the editability of the generated images. The researchers introduced the Extended Textual Conditioning Space, P+, consisting of individual token embeddings corresponding to each cross-attention layer in the UNet. The P plus space allows the diffusion model to be conditioned on multiple prompts simultaneously, each aligned with a different cross-attention layer, thereby enhancing image synthesis capabilities while maintaining editability. Using the publicly available stable diffusion model, they demonstrated their approach by partitioning cross-attention layers into subsets with either low or high spatial resolution and injecting different text prompts, red cube and green lizard, into these subsets. The model successfully combined the characteristics dictated by the separate layers to create images like a red lizard and a green cube, illustrating how attributes from different text prompts influence the generated content at respective layer resolutions. The summary of the provided text is as follows. The text discusses the benefits of working in an expanded space referred to as P+, for synthesizing and representing subjects with greater control over attributes like style, color, and structure. In section four, the properties of this new space, P+, are analyzed, revealing that different layers within the space control different aspects of the image attributes. Additionally, the extended space is shown to have the potential to improve textual inversion, a process by which a subject is represented in a conditioning space. P textual inversion, TI, is described as a technique that aims to find a representation of a specific subject by using a set of images. The authors extend this technique to create what they call extended textual inversion, XTI, which involves adding new textual tokens and optimizing their embeddings to predict the noise of the images to represent the subject more accurately in the extended space P+. This optimization occurs independently across different cross-attention layers of a denoising UNet. The experiments conducted in Section 4 involve an in-depth analysis of the UNet cross-attention layers, which show how different layers affect various properties of the images. For example, coarse layers focus more on object structure, while fine layers concentrate on appearance aspects, such as style and texture. Moreover, the authors use clip similarity metrics to examine the impact of each layer on different image attributes. Ultimately, this section investigates the effectiveness of the expanded space P plus and evaluates the extended textual inversion approach through various types of analysis, including quantitative, qualitative, and user studies, using the stable diffusion model that operates on an auto-encoded latent image space. The text describes a study on how different layers of a UNet deep learning model respond to varying prompts during the image generation process. The study involves using a UNet with 16 cross-attention layers divided into eight subsets, increasing from none to all layers. Images are generated using prompts comprising a color, object, and style, e.g. green bicycle oil painting or red house vector art. And the layers are conditioned on different prompts to observe the effects on the output, 
in their experiment, they start by conditioning all layers on a prompt, such as blue car impressionism, and then gradually shift to red house graffiti by conditioning from the innermost coarse layers to the outer fine layers. They find that shape-related aspects like house are influenced by the conditioning of the coarse layers, while color-related aspects like red only appear after conditioning the fine layers. This is visualized in figure six, where two different image seeds produce varying outputs as the conditioning shifts across layers. The UNET's output images are then evaluated for similarity to the object, color, and style elements of the prompts using clip similarity. This helps determine the influence of each prompt on the generated images. A chart, figure seven, showcases the relative clip similarities indicating that object attributes are captured by simply conditioning the coarse layers, while both coarse and fine layers contribute to capturing color attributes. The summary cuts off before the end of the original text, but based on the provided content, we could interpret that object details are affected by earlier layers of the network, while color details require additional, more refined layers. The implications might be that object recognition is a more fundamental task that the UNET can perform with less information, and that color recognition requires a more detailed and comprehensive analysis of the input. The text discusses how different layers in image generation impact the final output, with coarse layers dictating shape and structure, and finer layers impacting color appearance. Style, which involves both shape and texture, affects all layers. The authors evaluate their extended textual inversion XTI method, comparing it to the original textual inversion TI and other fine-tuning approaches like DreamBooth. XTI is argued to be more advantageous because it does not fine-tune model weights, preventing catastrophic forgetting and managing fewer parameters, hence avoiding scaling difficulties across multiple concepts. The setup for testing involved the use of NVIDIA GPUs and optimization steps, with XTI significantly reducing the number of steps needed for convergence, resulting in a shorter optimization time compared to TI. Quantitatively, XTI was assessed on its editability quality using cosine similarity between image embeddings and text prompts, text similarity, and distortion from the original concept, subject similarity. XTI outperformed TI in both subject and text similarity metrics, while requiring 90% fewer training steps. Using fewer steps with TI improved text similarity but worsened subject similarity. XTI even performed well when representing a subject with just a single image, outdoing the multi-image TI setup in terms of subject similarity. In summary, the proposed XTI approach for image generation appears to offer a better balance of efficiency and quality in editing images to align with textual prompts compared to existing methods like TI and various fine-tuning approaches. The text provides a comparison between textual inversion, TI, and an improved method called extended textual inversion, XTI. XTI is shown to have superior fidelity in representing the original subject and the prompts used in image generation tasks, as confirmed by a user study. The study revealed a significant preference for XTI, with 76% subject fidelity and 73% text fidelity, compared to TI's 20-24% and 27%, respectively. Furthermore, the text discusses the effectiveness of XTI in scenarios with limited data, such as when only a single image is available for training. It mentions the need to reduce the learning rate to prevent overfitting in this context. XTI performs better in single image inversion tasks, whereas another method, DreamBooth, shows poor performance and is prone to overfitting. Lastly, it hints that XTI leads to better editability of textual embeddings, indicating that XTI's tokens align more closely with the original tokenizer's embedding, potentially contributing to its improved performance. It should be noted that there is supplementary material available for more detailed information. The text describes an advanced method known as Extended Textual Inversion, XTI, for synthesizing and editing images using a single example image. This method stands in contrast to the original Textual Inversion, TI, approach. XTI is shown to be more faithful to the subject of the image and the text prompts used to generate the image, even when only one image is available for training. The effectiveness of XTI is measured by how closely the newly optimized tokens, which aid in creating the images, resemble the original natural token embeddings. 
The density of these tokens is compared using kernel-based density estimation, KDE, to ensure they are similar to the original language embeddings. The text also introduces the application of style mixing, where different layers of a denoising UNet, a type of neural network, can be used to combine features from different concepts. This effectively allows the shape from one concept to be merged with the appearance of another concept. The process involves combining independent XTI inversions of two different concepts and then creating a new mixed prompt that allows for the merging of the two concepts' respective features. The authors note that optimizing XTI with an additional density regularization loss term enhances its capacity to blend objects and styles in a harmonious manner without reducing the quality of the generated images. The provided text discusses a research study on an advanced image editing method called Extended Textual Inversion, XTI. The focus is on blending different image concepts and controlling the level of detail transferred between them. By tuning parameters K and K, users can adjust how much of one inverted image's details affect another, an effect that is showcased in Figure 12. The article mentions a particular implementation of this concept, where they vary the mixing degree by conditioning proportions of the image layers on two different inversions. Results, including more examples, are shown in Figure 13, demonstrating that the method inherits both shape and appearance impressively. Figure 14 provides a qualitative comparison between XTI and previous methods like TI-15 and DreamBooth 45, indicating superior performance of XTI in preserving source fidelity and attribute disentanglement. The conclusions highlight the successes of P+, an extended conditional space that offers more expressivity and control in textual inversion tasks. P+, is described as accurate, expressive, controllable, and much faster compared to previous methods. However, it's not without faults. It doesn't perfectly reconstruct image concepts and is slower compared to full model fine tuning. The disentanglement among layers isn't perfect either, leaving room for improvements. For future work, the authors suggest exploring encoding methods that enhance inverting images into P plus space and assessing the impact of fine tuning in tandem with P plus operations. Finally, the text concludes with an acknowledgement to several individuals for their contributions to improving the work. The text appears to discuss a comparison between various methods for image synthesis or modification using deep learning techniques, specifically focusing on manipulating the appearance and geometry of images using textual descriptions. The extended textual inversion method proposed by the authors clearly outperforms the baselines, which include textual inversion and dream booth. In textual inversion, target subjects and appearances are inverted separately and images are generated using a specific sentence structure. However, variations in prompts did not lead to significant improvements. Dream booth employs a pair of subjects for training. The style source concept was also inverted using style prompts. Detailed descriptions of these methods can be found in cited references from various conferences and publications on computer vision and image editing, indicating that this text is likely from a research paper or technical article discussing advancements in this field. The document includes references that provide more context and detail on each of the methods mentioned and related works in the field, suggesting a significant amount of prior research on the topic of image manipulation using generative models such as StyleGAN and its variations.